Hello, I'm Pastor Emily Edenfield, and I'm an assistant to the bishop in the ELCA South Carolina Synod. This is Lutheran Frequently Asked Questions, or FAQ, and today's FAQ is, what is Lent? Here's the short version. Lent is the church calendar season before Easter. It lasts for 40 days, not counting Sundays, and it prepares us to hear the story of Jesus' death and resurrection by calling us to renew our faith practices. In many churches, we kick off Lent with worship on Ash Wednesday. Sometimes we'll get together the night before and eat pancakes too. So let's talk about the calendar. The season of Lent lasts for 40 days because 40 is a symbolic number in the Bible. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness fasting and praying, then being tempted by the devil as he began his earthly ministry. The people of Israel spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness after God brought them out of slavery in Egypt. Noah and his family endured 40 days and nights of rain on the ark back in Genesis. You get the picture. So we do 40 days of Lent, except that we don't count Sundays. Why not Sundays, you might ask? Well, since the earliest days of the church, before there was an official calendar and all that, Christians have worshipped on Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. Every Sunday is a little Easter, and we can't have Lent on Easter, so we skip the Sundays. This could also mean that if you gave something up for Lent, you can have it on Sunday, but you and Jesus can talk that one through on your own. And why do we call this season Lent anyway? The word comes from an Old English word meaning to lengthen. In the Northern Hemisphere, Lent falls during springtime. The days are lengthening, the daylight is lengthening during this season of Lent. Easter, the day when we remember Jesus' resurrection, falls on a different day each year. Officially, it is the first Sunday after the full moon that occurs on or after the spring equinox. You don't have to remember that. What it means, though, is that Lent can start anywhere from February 4th to March 10th. We gather for worship on Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, and mark our foreheads with ashes as a sign of our repentance and our mortality. During this season, which usually features purple colors in the worship spaces, we focus on discipleship. We talk about what it means to follow Jesus and how we can do that as well as we can. Traditionally, there are three practices for Lent, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. All of them help us to grow in faith. Fasting means to give something up for a time. Some people will give up food one day a week. Some give up social media or shopping, another activity, or a favorite food. But here's the trick. When we have cravings, that is our cue to pray. You're fasting from lunch and your stomach growls? Time to pray for someone who's skipping lunch today because they can't afford it, or some other situation that's on your heart. The point of fasting is to remind us that we can give up anything because ultimately we are only dependent on God. Fasting also connects us to that Tuesday before Ash Wednesday tradition that I mentioned before. You might have heard this day called Shrove Tuesday, Fat Tuesday, or Mardi Gras, which just means Fat Tuesday in French. The point of Fat Tuesday was to use up all the food in the house so that it wasn't there to tempt anyone while you were supposed to be fasting. Pancakes use up dairy and eggs, and they go well with bacon or sausage, so they became staples of the feast. You might also see fried foods or cakes or other delicacies on the menu. The second traditional Lenten discipline is prayer. Prayer is simply talking with God. If you're looking to spend more time with Jesus, you might commit to Wednesday night worship at a congregation, praying for five or ten minutes every morning, or having devotions before bed at night. Reading the Bible is another great way to pray as we listen to what God is saying. Lent can be an excellent time to read through a book or a section of the Bible. This gets even better, of course, when we team up with friends, family, or church family to pray and listen together. The third traditional Lenten practice is almsgiving. We don't usually use the word alms anymore, but we do know what it is to share. So maybe for you this looks like an extra donation to your congregation or a cause that means a lot to you. Maybe this looks like random acts of kindness. Whether it's money or time, compliments or friendship bracelets, everyone has something they can give. God has given each of us a way to share with the world. Whether you fast from something, make extra space for prayer, or find a way to give this Lent, or you do all three, 
I hope that this season will be a time where the Holy Spirit draws you closer to God. We spend this time in the church getting ourselves ready for the terrible lows of Holy Week and the great joy of Jesus' resurrection on Easter morning. We might think of it as a time when we spring clean our souls. Lent is another chance for us to declutter, to put down the sins and habits that take us away from God, to make room for God's Spirit to work in us. As the flowers break through the cold ground in this springtime season, may God's love flower and bloom in your soul and in your community of faith. Thanks for welcoming me into your conversation today. I hope you'll continue the discussion when you email me or comment below with your questions and insights. You can keep up with the other FAQ by subscribing to the South Carolina Synod YouTube channel as well. You'll also find a handout to continue your thoughts and discussion in the comments below. I look forward to being with you again soon. Until then, keep asking good questions and peace be with you.